back again in the house of dreams with the bike specialist. This time we have got a corker. We have got 750 cc of three cylinder two stroke madness. It is of course the Kawasaki H2750. Now, James, <laughs> I'm not going to make any comments about me not knowing about this because I'm too young. <laughs> because that would be mean, but... Are you trying to say I'm a lot more than yourself? But there's not that much difference the, in it, by the way. <laughs> this is the first bike I've done with you that's genuinely a generation before me. Everything yes. else we've ridden, I can remember seeing in magazines, in, in, mm. in showrooms. This Kawasaki, this is my dad's era, and I've only ever seen these properly in grainy photos of my dad and his mates with hair longer than mine yes. and leather jackets at Manan's house and it so it's got a it's a real nostalgia to this it's I've no idea what to expect I've no idea <laughs> what it's going to be like what I'm in for well aka the widow maker that's what they call this brilliant <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so right. Kawasaki who wanted to really think out of the box because every manufacturer of its day wanted a super bike for the road so obviously Triumph had the Bonneville uh, Norton had the Commando, Ducati had the 750 SS, and Kawasaki fought right out of the box, and they came up with a triple two-stroke, 78 horsepower smoking machine. I mean, this thing is absolutely wild to ride. I don't know whoever signed it off to say that the bike could be street legal, but it, I can't believe they got it for on the road, because it's <laughs> absolutely horrendous to ride. I know what it is, so... I don't know what to expect, but I know the reputation of the bike. Yeah. But if you just saw one and you're not super up on your 70s bikes, you'd be like, look at that lovely old thing. Oh, it is. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's Kawasaki thinking out of the box. And I think it's a, with the new H2R they've done, I think it's a proper bow to, to the original bike mm. because it's a crazy motorcycle. And the new one, the Kawasaki H2R, is also a crazy motorcycle. This thing could do a standing quarter of a mile start. Bear in mind we're talking 1970s. And this particular model is a 75. This, is, this one's got uh, bigger ports and everything on it. It's actually a smoother bike to ride. So you'll Give be me the nice this. one. <laughs> the early ones were horrendous. I mean, they were constantly on the back wheel. And, you know, the right wheeling machine. And they sound awesome. But anyway, uh, the, this bike could do a standing quarter of a mile in 12 seconds. I mean, we're talking early seven, 12. 12 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and um, <laughs> that the does sound terrifying. Yeah, the handling, by the way, is horrendous. It feels like a speedway bike to ride. It's really flexing. It won't stop. Uh, you need to really <laughs> think what you're doing. I mean, you come into a roundabout and you're thinking about throwing the anchor out like 200 yards before. It's, it's, it's that kind of bike. You have to know what you're doing with it at all times. Obviously, cover the clutch with your finger just in case. <laughs> it's, I, I mean, that's why they call it Widowmaker. But, but I think it's important just to talk about it and maybe not ride it and just, yeah. just look at it then. Yeah. We'll, no, just, I'm, we'll push me down a hill and yeah, do some pictures exactly. like that. Um, but and they sound like I said, they sound absolutely awesome on load. Okay, I don't think I can put it off any longer. Let's do this. Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> I've been warned. Whoa. We're around. Ha! Ah, slow down. <laughs> slow down, please. There's neutral again. <laughs> so this one's a late model one. And the late model ones are actually really smooth and nice compared to the early ones. <laughs> I dread to think what a Mark 1's actually like. You've got to think about the corners. You've got to think about what you're doing on the corners. 
<laughs> How could you ride one of these for any distance? The handlebars, you can barely hold on to them, they're buzzing so much. So before we go too far into this 750cc air-cooled two-stroke piece of nonsense, if you like our videos you want to see more, hit the subscribe button down there. Um, and if you press the little notification bell, it will give you an email, a, a ping notification when we release a new video so you can watch them as soon as they come out. As well, something we've always tried to include some useful stuff into these videos. So any of the partners that we use at Bike World, we try and make sure they're useful to you guys as well. So we've partnered up with B-Moto for these bike specialist features. They're an insurance company, they're, they're a little bit different and as well as knowledge when you phone them up, they do a multi-bike policy that is pretty good value. They don't charge you for a mid-term adjustment, so if you change your bike or change the details on something mid-term, they don't do that annoying 40, 50 quid admin fee thing. And on top of that, they do a bunch of different cover for track days, for bikes in vans, for bikes that are parked in your living room. You know, they do a lot of different types of cover, so it's not just a straight out road insurance. So if you've got something a little bit different or if you're looking for insurance for multiple bikes, yeah, give the guys at BMOTO a shout. Tell them Chris sent you and uh, I don't know if they'll give you a discount, but <laughs> it'll make them feel good about helping us out of bike world. Those indicators are almost as big as the headlight, aren't they? <laughs> it's ridiculous. This bike is so 70s. I mean, everything about it, the chrome, the big long forks, the wobbly wobbly handlebars, that purple metallic paint job, all of those exhausts. It, it looks, I don't know if anyone watching this used to read Ogre cartoons when they were younger. I did, I loved them. But it was always, this, this feels to me like an Ogre cartoon bike with all those exhausts sticking out of it and the engine hanging out the sides of the frame. It, yeah, it's brilliant. It is an absolutely crazy thing. I cannot really, believe what it was like to ride by modern standards it's not that fast and definitely doesn't handle or stop like you expect but thinking back to the 70s when this came out and bearing in mind this one is the late model so this one had the bigger ports on it which made it a little bit smoother a little bit easier to ride the first gen ones were a real light switch power band this thing has got some power and it in the 70s it must have been ridiculous it must have been flat out ridiculous as well i'm now riding it as a beautifully restored pristine collector's piece so i'm not riding it absolutely wringing its neck and trying to kill myself on it but i can imagine if you were it would be an absolute handful today over some of those bumpy roads you can see the bikes kicking and wobbling you know there's so much going on while you're riding it. Big wibbly squishy handlebars that are rubber mounted. There's so much going on and most of it is just trying to keep the bike going in a straight line. <laughs> it's not easy to ride now. It cannot have been easy to ride in the 70s. And I've got the benefit of modern compound tires. So thank God for that. Weird stuff for modern, ri modern bike riders, but fold the foot pig up, kick the kickstart. You can't kick the kickstart with a clutch in. I've lost count of how many times I tried to do that and kickstart just goes straight to the floor. So it's neutral, clutch out, give it a good wallop on the kick and it kind of rattles to life. And honestly, if you've not heard one of these or if you've not had anything to do with air-cooled two strokes, you'd swear it was broken. Being air-cooled, there's much less water and metal and material around the outside of the cylinders, the pistons, where all the, the noise is being made from. So it has this like really raw, rough, crackling sound to it that you can you feel like you can hear the pistons going up and down in every cylinder. You feel like you can hear every mechanical component working. Totally alien to modern bikes. And on top of that, it's it's like you're sat on a buzzsaw. The whole thing is buzzsaw. You know, the foot pegs are wibbling up and down, the indicators are buzzing, the levers are flapping, the handlebars that are rubber mounted are still like vibrating like crazy. Everything on it is fizzing and buzzing. It's, it is, yeah, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous to think that, you know, people used to ride these miles and miles and miles. It would be their bike to go and ride out for the day. Like, you'd have to be a hard, hard human being to, to survive that. So you've got the thing running, everything's buzzing and zinging and there's plumes of smoke coming out the back and ring, 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 ring. That's, that's an intense enough experience. Then you gotta try and find the gear. Neutral on this for some reason is at the bottom. So if you keep clicking down, that's neutral and then up for one, two, three, four, five. Which every single time I came to a stop or came to do a U-turn, I'd change down to what I thought was first and then go ring, oh, click it back. There's a confusing one, neutral is at the very bottom. Not between first and second, but below first. Which I'm definitely going to get caught out with. <laughs> wow! 
again, just weird little alien things like that that confused me all day long and made me realise how stuck in my habits of <laughs> modern motorbikes I am. Then you get it riding. Open the throttle hard in first gear and it's fast and the power's quite sharp and it's soft. So it's soft and squishy. So the rear squats down, the front comes up and it wheels its bars and then you just keep doing that through the gears. Clutch, you know, clutch and the gear change. If you short shift it, it didn't ever feel that nice to do. So clutch the gear change, another gear. And the thing's wobbling and shaking. Everything's buzzing, plumes of smoke coming out the back. Just daft, just a daft, daft thing. And then you get to a corner and we were jumping around between this and a few other bikes today and every time i got on this the first corner was always a drama you arrive at the corner hit the brake with two fingers panic hit the brake with four fingers and the back brake down change and then hope that it makes it round it wasn't as bad as i was fearing i think i built it up in my head that it was going to be absolutely impossible to ride around a corner it wasn't it goes into the corner it's reasonably light it doesn't weigh much to throw around and the big bars kind of let you wrestle with it a little bit so it wasn't as bad as i feared it was going to be there's always this little feeling in the back of your head that if you overstep the mark if you hit a bump mid-turn it wasn't going to be where you last put it and and that's the bit i i found quite enjoyable about riding it is you couldn't rely on being halfway around a turn hitting the brakes standing up to miss a pothole or a car or something and then sticking it back in you had to plan your speed and your turn put it in at the beginning of the corner point it the right way and that was what you had if you had to change that it was quite often a drama so that different style of riding you've got to ride with a bit of forward plan and you need to be on the gas a little bit more through the turn again it's always nice to have another challenge riding a bike and this certainly gave a different approach to riding some of those twisty roads we were on today it was a joy to ride as a sunny pub bike this thing was really really brilliant a really different and a really rich riding experience and the one thing that is the absolute party piece of this bike is riding flat out down a road stopping and then turning around and immediately riding back the other way because that way you get all the joys of riding the 70s two-stroke but you're riding back through your own cloud of two-strokes so you get the smell as well which is my tip for a happy time on a kawasaki h2 looking next this h2750 is pretty ridiculous and at the time it gave Kawasaki a reputation for making ridiculous motorcycles that were fast powerful and only for the brave fast forward to a time of ABS and traction control and compulsory crash helmets and all the stuff that we've got in our modern motorcycling world that is designed to keep us safer and for some reason Kawasaki built that one behind me the Kawasaki H2 the modern supercharged one so to follow on from this piece of nostalgic old ridiculousness, we're gonna get on next on the modern supercharged equivalent and see if it can have the same impact today that this thing had back in the 70s. Uh -huh.